All right, folks, it's time for the weekly challenge. Me versus the robot every week on BridgeBase. Uh, I'm going to release two boards of this 10 board challenge every day on Mondays through Fridays on YouTube and right on my site, bridgelesson.com. And in these videos, I'm just going to take you through my process as I play a 10 board challenge versus the robots each week. Uh, this week, we're playing imps as the scoring method. So we'll, we'll be looking at ways that we're going to maybe play just a little bit differently in this format. In other weeks, we'll be playing match points to kind of keep the, the robots on us and also get us a look at the different sorts of strategies. Uh, but each week on Monday through Friday, I'll release two boards. We'll have a little chat about them. And if you see something or if I ask you a question and you need more time, feel free to pause the video, folks, and get ready to press play when you feel you have the answer or you've thought about it enough. Uh, I'm going to go relatively quickly through these, but we'll stop for the, the really interesting parts of each of these hands if we come across them. So let's start this out, guys. I'm going to try to win every week. We won't get any result until the very end. This is how a challenge works, and the robots are pretty good. So we, we usually have our work cut out for us each week, but we're just going to be relatively normal unless we feel we've made a few bad mistakes and make it a little wild toward the end of the week. So let's start out with this first hand. Uh, First off, take your bid, guys. What would you bid when it goes one spade by your north partner and it goes two clubs on your right? In all of these situations, we're going to be sitting south. Make your call before I make it in about three seconds here. And the call we're going to make is two hearts. Uh, if we had less values, uh, not enough to bid at the two level, we would double instead with this hand. And don't get this one mistaken. This is not game forcing anymore. This is at least a good 10 or more, so it's invitational or better. And it shows five or more cards in the heart suit. If we had the same hand and less hearts, right? We only had four hearts, we would have doubled there in, in our spot anyway. And now it goes three clubs, three diamonds by partner, pass to us. Make your call, folks. What bid are you gonna make with this in? Board one of the challenge. See how well you're gonna do. See if you can make the same decisions that I make. This is your call, folks. Three no trump, right? You have excellent club stoppers. In fact, your king queen is well positioned, and you really expect to make a game on this one with partner of having opened the bidding originally. However, <laughs> your partner's not going to let you play three no trump, apparently. And in fact, we could have bid three spades here, but that would have, you know, probably shown two card support. We were trying to pick off a no trump contract, uh, but here it looks like partner's not going to let us. And I would guess partner's like 6-4 in these spots, like six spades and four diamonds, which is not bad for us, right? They probably have shortness in clubs and they're a little worried. And they also just don't want to get us into a bad spot of three no trump. So if they're less than six spades, I would be shocked. Wow, they're 6-5. <laughs> a good bid partner. <laughs> uh, our robot partner did pretty well here. Um, it's a, certainly a, a shapely hand. They did a good job to open this initially and you know we might even make too many tricks in this particular spot but let's see okay uh, we we expect this to be winning by the way uh we, we don't expect them to be leading away from the king of diamonds right so this is a finesse that we can expect to take again and be successful uh the key thing for us now is on this diamond lead we should just be looking at this saying okay this person bid relatively aggressively, right? They overcalled two clubs, and now they're leading a diamond after partner raised their clubs. Well, it sounds like they have ace something something of clubs are worried about leading that. But you would guess diamonds would be shortness, right? You should. And look how many you're looking at. You have eight diamonds in your hand, and the opponent just led this suit for you. Um, so here, it's very important that we draw Trump very quickly. And remember, this is imps, right? We're not worried about over tricks or anything like that. We are just trying to make our contract and be successful whenever we make a call. And here I'm just going to play ace of spades and a low spade. We could have played jack of spades probably and maybe had a little more success, but we got a little lucky here. And here we'll, we'll see this. Now, either they're roughing this or they're not. Uh, if they're not, and they're roughing it, so it's over. Uh, if they weren't roughing this, though, we might have had a chance to take an extra trick there. And here they'll take their ace of clubs. But we will now just be able to claim the rest, guys. Take a look. All the diamonds uh, are, it's a marked finesse anyway, but we can pitch them as well in the ace of hearts and the queen of clubs. Uh, I probably should have played uh, spades a little differently there, to be honest. I should just play the jack of spades from dummy and then cross over to, to uh, this hand and, and uh, take the finesse again. But as you can see, if I clip over to the results screen, guys, here's our original board. Uh, yeah, I, I, I played this uh, a little bit too quickly here. If we just win this 10 of diamonds originally, 
Um, I'm not sure why I just don't just play the jack of spades there and let them do whatever they're going to do. They can still get this right and then get the number of tricks they got and just go cover. And then they get their rough anyway. And as, as that happened, that's exactly how it worked out anyway, right? They got their two spade tricks for sure. Even though they crashed their king and queen together, they realized they're rough again anyway. So a little lucky there, 420. Uh, but we'll take that, right? In an imps version of this uh, game, we will take a game score that's on the plus side, right? If we could have done one trick better, uh, that would be devastating in match points. But in imps, it's not that big of a deal. We have 10 boards if we miss an imp there to make up that one and maybe more. And take a look at hand number two here we go guys make your opening bid with this one first it should be very easy for you we're not going to distort our shape in any way at all uh we're going to open a diamond and we're probably going to rebid two no if after a major suit response from partner but we'll see if we get that uh there we go okay there's two no uh hand is really strong right so we're, we're very happy when partner kicks it into game uh we wouldn't be terribly upset if partner passed that would usually mean we're we're getting a real stinker in the dummy here but right at this point we're just going to play three no trump and be happy to be playing it from the strong hand side which is our side let's see that dummy all right take a moment guys and plan your play for this one what are you going to do or what are you going to want me to do to be successful on this hand and think about the the potential real wins and the pitfalls and don't forget start out with the basics basics guys all right so first things first uh i'm gonna just count my winners right so i should recognize that i have three spade winners on this lead right this lead is coming towards our hand here right so we are always gonna get these two tricks right either an hour later and that ace of spades over there as well so there is three spades we also have five diamonds that's eight and the ace of clubs is nine so my question for you is and, and you can pause this if you want to um what are your what are your plans right do you want to try to take more than nine tricks is probably my, my first question right how do you want to play this hand as well have you come up with the, your best strategy again folks feel free to pause i'm going to start talking about three seconds all right so the key here is recognizing that this scoring format imps is especially punitive for the times where you get to a spot and go minus especially when you had an easy way to go plus and most especially when you're in a game and even most most especially when you're vulnerable in that game so we have an easy way to lock up 600 plus right and we have a clear issue with our hand this heart position is absolutely extraordinarily vulnerable right you could lose four heart tricks and a club if you let the opponents in on this hand and that's what we're not going to do we may in fact take extra tricks on this especially if the ace of hearts is in the cease player's hand and in match points you might actually risk taking a club finesse for this reason because you might be able to take 12 tricks or 13 tricks for goodness sakes on a hand like this it felt all goes super well all right so in this spot you certainly are judging differently based on the scoring right so here it is so important that we make this even in the unlikely event that we're going to go down and honestly partner has nine eight fourth of hearts we might be able to create a heart trick or be safe in this suit but this is just a, an example of safety first right so let's see what's happening in spades boom okay so there's our trick now we're going to use our entries smartly here we hope we're going to play this jack of spades unblocking and we're going to save that club play till the end we know we get to get, get over to dummy with the diamonds so we'll do that now and we'll win that jack of diamonds we'll cash this ace of spades um i kind of want to pitch a heart here in the unlikely event that they might pitch some clubs and we might take four of these um but we could also at the end just lead a club towards the ace and a heart back towards our king so i'm going to preserve that and i'm just going to pitch a club and assume that things are going to go reasonably well for the opponents at least in their decisions here we see that the diamonds broke badly left hand opponent had four right had one nothing that's going to help us out there really we're just going to win our tricks and we're going to take number seven here they, they pitched two clubs over there so be mindful of that there comes a heart uh, okay now maybe we're a little upset that we uh we pitched away our our uh our fourth club but here they pitched their king of clubs magic we'll play the queen and it looks like they were unblocking for partner and by the way 
this suggests that left-hand opponent has a something of hearts, right? They're unblocking because they could see an end play coming. They could see us playing club club apparently. And now they're sitting over there with like ace queen of hearts, something like that. And they're desperately trying to avoid getting thrown in, which was one of our strategies, by the way. We would have thought about this at the end here if they hadn't obviated the need for us to do anything weird. So here we're going to end in dummy anyway. And, and that's just because we want to be leaning towards our heart and <laughs> there's the queen. So I, I guarantee this ace here, I can duck it and just watch the jack and the ace be over there. That's how confident I am that this is what's going on. The king of clubs was actually a really good play by lefty at that moment. Uh, let's take a look at the result here on, on this last one when it loads up. Uh, take a look. So here, when, when it gets to this point, our lefty is just picturing exactly what we would have done, right? We, we've run our diamonds. And now think about this. If we play this queen of diamonds now, I don't want to move this thing here. Hang on a second, folks. Right, so, so here, if we, if we play this queen of diamonds now and they pitch a heart, right? We have actually a pretty simple line of play that's safe and gives us extra tricks, right? Being safe, meaning we don't want to take a club finesse just in case the hearts are wrong. We can now lead a club. They'll play the 10 and we'll play the ace. And then we throw them in and they have to lead a heart towards our king, right? So, so what the robot did is they saw this coming, right? So when we let the queen of diamonds, they're like, oh, you're not going to end play me, Mr. NYC Pro. You know, I'm going to be a, a good robot and unblock. And that just ended up giving us not one, but two extra tricks. So they, they, did, a, they did a job here to try to keep us uh, from, from taking some, some tricks. But as it turned out, for them, this is also not the biggest deal. Because think about this. This is imps for them as well. So they gave up over tricks and the possibility or gave up one extra trick and the possibility of maybe taking extra themselves, right? So not a bad start to the week, guys. Welcome to the Monday version of the weekly challenge. We get through first these first two boards with two solid games, a non-vulnerable and then a vulnerable game. Uh, nothing we really would have done extraordinarily on top of that. So we feel like we're in a pretty good spot. We have eight boards left to go, four days left in the week. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the rest of this weekly challenge. We'll see boards three and four, and we'll continue grinding toward what we hope is a victory versus the robot this week. So guys, until tomorrow morning, I will bid you adieu. And may all of your finesses be successful. And I'll either see you here on YouTube or in my classes on bridgelesson.com. We'll have more on that later on in the week, guys. So take care and enjoy.